The idea of help from the other side isn't uncommon. We've all heard of guardian angels and spirit guides. But what if a spirit appeared just once, and when it did, it started off a chain of dramatic events that totally changed your life? That's what this story is all about. I felt um, a vibrating love impulse on my heart center, and almost instantaneously at the same time, a very bright light coming up behind me on the right hand side, and I saw the airman. Me and my sister went to the beach with my dad, and we were playing by the concrete barge. And um, my sister was digging in the sand, and she ran over, and the bomb was laying in between the grass. Gary Fulger is a native Canvey Islander and World War II aircraft enthusiast who felt he had a special mission of his own to complete, the erection of a plaque in memory of three US airmen who never made it back. In 1944, on the 19th of June, there was a, a bombing mission which was to take place from Kim Bolton in Huntingtonshire. These aircraft would take off to bomb V-1 doodlebug sites in France. It was supposed to just be a normal run which was to go straight out, bomb the target, and obviously come back to base, prepare for another mission, which could have been a few days afterwards. But unfortunately, as the 20 to 30 aircraft were coming back from this mission, something terribly happened, which was the case of a B-17 flying in formation of the same group, actually physically dropped on top of the another B-17G, and of the Candy aircraft, which was to come down on Candy, six young Americans, average age 19 to 20, actually bowed out. But there were three airmen still on the Candy aircraft. And when I actually found personal items, such as burnt money, parts of a parachute harness, I knew that they belonged to a human being who was killed back in 1944. It then became very personal for me to try and find out as much information as I could about this crash, and if possible, try and get some recognition, because it wasn't just a piece of metal laying in the ground. This was like a time capsule back from the dark days of 1944. After finding out about the loss of life, Gary embarked on a mission to make sure that these young men were never forgotten. He began a campaign to get a plaque put up in his hometown to remember these soldiers. In my own way, what I was trying to do was preserve that memory. Gary also lectures on World War II history, and it was after one of these talks that he received a ghostly message of encouragement from a medium who was in the audience. I was due to be at the school that day when Gary was giving his talk, but not for that, for reading with the children. And as they were busy in the hall with Gary, I was asked if I'd like to go in and listen, which I did. About three quarters of the way through Gary's lecture, um, I felt... Um, a vibrating love impulse on my heart centre and almost instantaneously at the same time a very bright light coming up behind me on the right hand side and I saw the airman. Um, thought wise he told me he was an American airman and then he actually told me what he wanted me to do which was to pass some information on to Gary and the airman told me to tell Gary that he wanted to thank him for all he'd done and all he was doing and he said to tell him that we, he used the word we, we actually, not I, that we recognise his struggle and that what he's trying to achieve would definitely come about. And this was seen as the main item that he wanted Gary to understand. He was very vibrant and alive and uh, very bright and extremely happy. And it just seemed that I actually had to relay this message because it, it seemed so important to him and he'd made such an effort to come there so that he could say this. After Sandy approached me, uh, she gave the impression that she wanted to communicate with me, to talk to me, but maybe not sure how I'd respond and react. It didn't shock me because with the experience I've had in the past with doing the aircraft recoveries, it was just nice to know that I wasn't alone in what I do. It was nice to know that someone had came forward talk to me and probably give me a little insight into into something that I knew was there but not 100% enough to go. I felt I had to pass this information on to Gary um, basically because I felt the airman had gone to a lot of um, hard work and trouble to get this message through and it was obviously manoeuvred on the day when I would be there 
because if you're a reasonable medium for spirit, some people can work for you and some can't. And on that particular day, I was just right for the occasion, which gave him the opportunity. And I felt to not pass it on, his opportunity would have been wasted. And I hoped it would be helpful to Gary in some way. Although not knowing Gary, or what work he did until that day, um, I didn't realise, in fact, that he had been working towards anything. I didn't know about it. Despite being a little unsure, Gary was filled with the strange feeling that what the spirit had been referring to was his campaign to honour the memories of those three airmen. He thought no more about it until an unexpected sequence of events began to unfold that almost started with a bang. What happened in uh, June 1996, I was up Candy Point where I normally go, which is not far actually from where the American bomber crashed. And two daughters, Chelsea and Jodie, came across the bomb. On the day when we found the bomb, me and my sister went to the beach with my dad and we were playing by the concrete barge and um, my sister was digging in the sand and she ran over and the bomb was laying in between the grass. We pulled my dad over and he said, don't touch it. He goes, it might be a bomb. And I was telling my sister it was a bomb and she said, it weren't. And so my, my dad goes to to my aunties and rings the bomb disposal team and they come over and then they dig, they blow the bomb up. The girls became local celebrities after their discovery and the local mayor invited them along to meet him and receive a prize. And of course their dad, Gary, went with them. It was this chance meeting that was to lead to the fulfilment of Gary's 20-year dream. After they were nominated for the game, given certificates from the mayor at the time, Dennis Williams, I then again approached them with regards to a plaque being put up in recognition to an American incident back in 1944. He showed interest and I thought, you know, after the last 20 years of getting a plaque put up, this was just, you know, he was just being nice to me. But 1996, this plaque was placed, which took a lot of relief from myself for all the years of persevering and putting this up. But at the end of the day, the daughters hadn't found the bomb. In no way in God's earth would there have been a plaque put up because they wouldn't have met the right people to initiate this service. Whilst Gary may have been surprised about finally achieving his ambition, Sandy wasn't. I'm not surprised by the change of events really that led up to the plaque uh, being erected because what the airman told me, I accepted and I felt that what he said would come about as he said it would and I felt it was encouragement for Gary and the different events that came by since then uh, that brought it all about I think were very much there along the way and the important thing was for Gary to know what he was going to achieve that would keep him going because his struggle apparently had been for a very long while and it was very hard. If there is someone out there that, you know, helping me out then I appreciate that and I will carry on doing what I'm doing. And I just wish everyone could experience or feel what it's like to get that motivation. You can't buy that. That feeling you cannot buy. It's something that's there that comes through. And when it's in you, it's a lovely feeling. It's a brilliant feeling. Whether you believe Gary's story or not, one thing is for sure. He fought for 20 years to try and get recognition for those American airmen without any success. And then, once he got some encouraging words from this spirit guide, things changed dramatically. Lucky coincidence or poignant prophecy? You be the judge.